right here uh, one person infected with the pathogen this person can transmit to another person that's why we call infectious disease but there are diseases person is in uh, person has the disease but the person cannot transmit the disease to another person example cancer cardiovascular disease now if we look uh, pandemic global pandemic covid 19 like uh, disease affected all over the world and more than 50 million people in several years consecutively taking died but if we consider certain diseases like uh, cardiovascular disease so every year 18 million people died due to cardiovascular disease 18 to 20 million maybe estimated 18 to 20 million people died due to cardiovascular disease itself now the cardiovascular disease existing from many many years in this world now what we know about cardiovascular disease and why still we can't provide solution why still people dying with disease why we cannot make a good treatment for cvd still we need the knowledge we need the understanding we need the biology to handle these questions so learning biology provides solution to make a better future for handling the diseases and uh, HIV. HIV is again viral disease. This causes AIDS in human and this disease still somewhere around 1980 now 30 40 years old. If the virus disease is 30 40 years old what we know about the virus why we can't make vaccine why we can't uh, find the solutions to stop the spreading of the disease. So this all we can uh, handle if we learn biology and people will become expert in this area. They can uh, find solution in the future. Okay, last uh, quite new area. how we can use science in a legal field, in a law. How we can use science in a legal situations and ethical issues. Now here, when we say a legal and ethical, these two words are different. When it comes to legal, it's written as a law in the country. That is equally applied to every citizen in the country. So if the person is doing that one, which is prohibited to do, then this person doing something wrong, it is not legal and it's a punishable. Another one is called ethical issues, ethical. So ethical issues are not written as law and uh, certain things, doing certain things uh, approved by the society and some people are not approved. It's a, some kind of a, a moral issues, moral uh, beliefs like things within the society. So some people agree, some people disagree. So these kind of things are ethical issues. So human society, we have these legal things and ethical issues. For example, uh, when it comes to a certain topic like abortion. So is abortion legal? Some countries legal, so they can't do abortion. But when it comes to uh, certain cases, what about medical abortion? The fetus is somehow uh, have a, a bad genetic disease detected. 
Now, survival after birth is not sure. So should we do this uh, medical abortion? So who will approve? The society say, no, it's still not a good idea. But some people agree, yes, uh, if it is a condition uh, not good for the baby after birth, you can go for it. Like, likewise, we have a certain things embedded in our, on our society, legal and ethical issues. Now, when it comes to uh, science, biology, how do we use our knowledge to solve this problem? Okay, I will show you uh, one example. This one. This is a story happened uh, uh, some five, six, seven years ago in Gampaha district. And this is a documented uh, on the website Wikipedia. And this is about uh, a girl, five-year-old girl, Seya. So this girl abducted and raped. And then uh, the body found somewhere in that area. Now this kind of thing happened. Investigator, investigators find suspicious person, suspect. Who is the suspect? Then they found first suspect, a schoolboy, and uh, they interrogate. They try to get the truth out of the mouth, but this is very difficult. Even people say, people can say, lie. I did not do it. And people can also say, I do it because of certain things uh, cannot tolerate at that point. Yes, I did it. But the suspect say, yes or no, there is no scientific evidence. We need scientific evidence. And the scientific evidence is testing the DNA of suspect and testing the DNA of the crime scene. So when they found uh, samples, of certain things, maybe uh, any biological material from the suspect, they check, is this uh, DNA matching with this DNA? And they found no. Then a second suspect. Again, they check the DNA, no matching. Then the third one came up, third suspect, admit, that the person has uh, done this one. That means he confessed. The person confessed that the, I have done this one. So he admit the crime done. This is a confessed. So confessed that I have done this one. Now, this is no evidence. Even a person is saying this, there's no uh, scientific evidence. Evidence is check the DNA. Okay, if you are done, we check your DNA with the DNA found in this place. No matching. Even he confessed, DNA is not matching. And when the investigator looked why he confessed, because he confessed he was uh, forced severely by his brother to accept this as a, that he did this work. And then uh, that time, investigator also checked this guy, DNA, and the crime scene DNA, this DNA matched. 100% pure scientific evidence, and after that, uh, science helped them to find the suspect. So this is some example of how we can use science to find uh, certain things in the area. Okay, now I hope you will have uh, an idea how far you can go with the knowledge of science. There are many areas available. I mean, not only medicine. So traditionally in our country, uh, medicine becomes the first thing that every student trying to uh, go into the medicine. But this is not the same for the other countries because world has been changed. 
many different areas uh, open up, many job opportunities are there, and certain areas are uh, much more interested, certain areas are much more uh, uh, things to do, and uh, it's same here. So people should uh, find their own interest, where they go with their degrees, their A-level results. When the A-level results come, you can't decide, the EZ score will decide. However, considering a situation in our country, the become a doctor, serving to the society, because society need doctors more and more, because we are lacking uh, qualified people, and uh, we are expecting to have uh, more doctors. As a result, again, no harm, every student will try to become a first case, a first go to become a doctor, right? Now the next lesson, third lesson, we're going to learn the nature and organizational patterns of living world. So when we look at our living world, how this uh, living world organized, now, from this case, again, we find uh, different size and different forms. Uh, different uh, forms and different shapes. And we have a different habitat. So this doesn't give uh, much about the, uh, this lesson is doesn't match with too much scientific way because habitat we learn uh, under biodiversity. Habitat is a place where living and non-living and their interaction. And we have a different habitat. Uh, and size of the organism change. So this lesson is nothing much uh, for any kind of a exam question. But this is just to understand uh, certain things coming up uh, in the next lessons. So when you take about the size, it's better that we should understand certain uh, basic things. In biology, certain organism uh, come under nanometer level. And some organism micrometer level and some organism centimeter level, some organism meter level. Now this is the scale we have to measure. So for example, when it come this way, it's getting bigger and bigger. When it's going this way, it is getting smaller and smaller. So we know that uh, when it come to meter, 100 centimeter is one meter. So then 100 centimeter is one meter. When you come to micrometer, thousand micrometer equal uh, not thousand uh, ten thousand right, ten thousand micrometer equal one centimeter, and then uh, thousand nanometer equal one micrometer. So it's very small. For example, uh, certain virus, most of the times they come under nanometer, and uh, bacteria. They can come under 0 0.5 micrometer. And uh, some organisms, their size is uh, one centimeter, for example, ant. And some organism, like this giant redwood tree, could be a uh, 100, meter, 100 meter tall. So we have a huge variation now in our field when we consider the size. So we have to handle nanometer to 100 meter things because plant, we already discuss about the plant. In biology, we have to learn about plant. We have to work with plants. And also we learn, we have to uh, work with virus and they're very small. This is bacteria. So huge range we have when we talk about the size of the organism. Next, shape.
So this kind of a worms are cylindrical and fish a streamline. So they have a tapered head like this. It's very good uh, when they swim, there's less resistance. So this kind of uh, shapes form naturally to have a better life for them. So these worms can live uh, inside the soil. So they can uh, make burrows like inside the soils and the cylindrical shape nicely fit into these uh, tunnels. Again, uh, we're talking about shape wise. We can see so much of uh, different in our living things. The next thing, uh, forms. In forms, one organism, unicellular. Unicellular means one cell. And some organism, multicellular. Example, uh, human, plant. In forms, we can also find this range, one cell to a trillion cells organism. And again, uh, when it comes to a habitat, the, the place where the animals lives, when they live in different places, for example, certain animal, they live in terrestrial habitat. Terrestrial and aquatic. And this is arboreal, that is trees, live on trees and uh, birds like things, aerial. So they try to uh, mostly spend their time in the space, air, aerial, and some animals like this uh, loris. So loris uh, is uh, common in Sri Lanka in certain part, slender loris, and they live mostly in the trees. So habitat is a place where animals live. Based on the places, we can find many, many different places, terrestrial, aquatic, arboreal, and aerial. Okay, by learning this lesson, we also learn so much of diversity, so much of uh, variation, so much of uh, uh, scope we have in biology. Next lesson, uh, we're going to learn oh, oh, characteristic of organism. Now, when it comes to characteristics of organism, we should uh, able to define the word, what is life? Unfortunately, there is no a proper definition for life. It's hard to define life because at the moment we don't understand what is life, how life comes and how life goes and how life is operating. So these things are unclear, so we cannot make a conclusion, a definition about life. However, we make a small uh, trick. We're going to list if these are the characteristics if we see characteristic, this uh, characteristic in certain object, we define it has life. These are order and organization, and uh, metabolism, growth, adaptation, irritability and coordination and reproduction and evolution. So I try to uh, use this kind of a uh, trick to remember it. So metabolism for M, order and organization for O, 
growth for G, adaptation for A, I for irritability and coordination, R reproduction, E for N, uh, evolution. Okay, now after two years of your study, if you if someone asks to list uh, all these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characteristic of living thing, you can list certain things. But these things, uh, you might miss certain things. But if we can remember this kind of, uh, oh my God, A-R-N, like sentence, it gives a little bit of a speciality because we don't learn this kind of a thing uh, in uh, other places. Now in biology, I learned this, oh my God, A-R-N. Okay, right, this is O. Order and organization, at least you can list the seven things or at least six things without remembering by heart. Because when you come to two years, two and a half years, you learn all these things. You learn metabolism. What is metabolism in, into the depth? You're going to learn evolution as a separate lesson. And we're going to learn coordination as a separate lesson. You're going to learn reproduction as a separate lesson. After that, these words are something uh, not new for you. You know everything. But how these seven things bring to one place? We need this kind of a tricks. If you know this trick, you don't want to by heart uh, remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So many, many places when you are learning, you have to, uh, you need to find this kind of uh, strategies and tricks to remember certain things uh, quickly and this can be remembered nicely. Whenever you have uh, uh, eight factors to list, seven factors to list, or 10 factors, 10 things to list, we can find uh, this kind of uh, mnemonics that we can easily understand. Okay, let's see uh, the characteristics. Now, first thing, uh, living things, And these are non-living things. So again, we consider these seven things. Can this cup grow? Can this cup reproduce? Can this cup uh, respond if you touch this one? Can this cup uh, uh, doing some kind of a metabolic activity, some kind of chemical reactions? Now, we don't see anything. But when you see living things, we can find all these seven uh, things. Now, order and organization. Okay, now when it comes to order and organization, we know that a uh, starting point is an atom. Then the atom join together make elements. Then the elements make a compound. And after making compound, these compound organize in many different way to produce uh, different uh, organelles, cells, and then uh, certain structures like this. When we look these uh, structures, they have a very proper order because if you take a naturally non-living thing stone, what you see in stone, there's not organized irregular shapes and there's no uh, order, there's no organization. It is just the collection of these elements as a mass, that's it. But living things, we can see just like a stone, starting point is an atom, the elements and compound. After that, from compound onward, there is a very complicated organization to make uh, uh, this living uh, stuff, living uh, objects. So if we take flower, if we take a leaf, if we take a human body, human organ, they have a very advanced organization. So this is one uh, character of living thing. 
non-living thing take a stone or any other particles they don't have a higher level of organization they can come atom element and maybe compound after that from this point they don't show uh, any uh, organization that means compound make organelle organelle make cell cell make tissue like that we don't see but living thing we can see this uh, higher level of organization that we're going to learn at, as last lesson what are the hierarchy of this organization right what is metabolism metabolism is chemical reaction in the cell All chemical reaction in cell is called metabolism. So if you have, if you learn a chemical reaction in a cell, for example, plant cell, carbon dioxide, water, it can make a glucose molecule and oxygen in the presence of sunlight as energy. Now, when you look at this reaction, it's a metabolic reaction. In this metabolic reaction, compound joined together to make a new compound. So this is a making. This making new molecules is called anabolism. So metabolism has two parts, anabolism, other one. What happened? We take glucose now. We take glucose. After we take glucose, we need oxygen to burn glucose and we produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. Now we are breaking glucose molecule. So this is called catabolism. Then anabolism has two types of reaction. Uh, sorry, the metabolism has two types of reaction, anabolic reaction and catabolic reaction. But if you take a stone, uh, they don't show maybe a there is a small chemical reactions. If the water and the acidity of the water can start to break the stone, but we don't see proper chemical reactions happening in this way to highlight as living things and non-living things. Living things, we always have these metabolic reactions. Next, growth, growth and development. So what is growth? Growth is irreversible increase of the weight or mass of an organism. Now here, egg, chick, small chicken, and the large hen or whatever. So this way, we can see increase the growth and uh, increase the growth of this organism. The, the weight increase irreversibly. So it is not going back again this direction. It's only going one direction, the weight increase. Development. So what is development? Development is change of the body structure. Irreversible change of the body structure. So these are very basic things, but still uh, we should uh, keep somewhere in our brain as a very basic definition for these things. Because if you look development, uh, you can see in this picture, the change of certain things. For example, initially there is no comb and uh, this comb slowly develop and at the end they have this comb and uh, this feather develop into different uh, shapes. So we can observe a change of the body. That is the development. Next thing. Irritability and coordination. 
Now let's see what is the meaning of this irritability. Okay, look this picture. If you touch a hot surface, immediately you take hand from the hot surface. That means there is a change of this place. Because if you look this uh, stove, only this one is a red color. So that means uh, the heat is very high in this place. So this kind of uh, changes of the energy we call stimulus. Stimulus is change of the surrounding. For example, if you hear loud noise all of a sudden, that is a stimulus. If you smell something, it is a stimulus. If you feel cold, it is a stimulus. If you feel warm, if you feel hot, it is a stimulus. If you uh, make a, if you feel pain of your hands when you touch something, it is a stimulus. That means uh, some kind of a changes of our surrounding. So if we have this kind of a stimulus, then definitely there's a response. Response is withdrawal of the hand. Now, irritability, under irritability, we say how a response made by the body when there is a stimulus. Now, if, if we do the same thing to a non-living thing, a table, chair, or stone, if you really place a certain hot things on it, there's no reaction. But living things, they react. So reaction to the stimulus is called irritability. Reaction to stimulus is irritability. Reaction to stimulus is the irritability. And what is coordination? Now the stimulus detected by receptor of our body. That's a sensor. We have a sensors, we call them receptors. So these receptors communicate to the nervous system. Nervous system is our coordination system. Then the nervous system make a effector. Effector is take hand immediately from this place. That means coordination is working several parts of our body to an event at correct time. Here, hand, brain, uh, nervous system, and uh, receptors, they all work together for one event, take the hand out of this danger. This is the coordination. That means we can define coordination is working many parts of our body at same time for right time for one event. Living things can only make this kind of a response. And we are going to learn coordination as a different uh, lesson in unit five. That means same thing you are going to learn. Irritability and coordination, you're going to learn again as a separate topic. But here you have a small understanding. Okay, I know what is irritability, reaction of the body when there's a stimulus. Coordination is all the parts of the body working together for right thing at right time. Next, living thing can adapt. Living thing can adapt to the surrounding. So if a surrounding Conditions are unfavorable. Living thing can make changes that they can survive in this place. So these changes could be a body change of the body. Change of the body is called anatomical. Anatomical adaptation. 
for example, uh, having a, a long uh, beak of certain bird is an anatomical adaptation. They can uh, take nectar from the flower. So simple thing to understand if there is a flower and a uh, bird has a long neck. So this bird can take nectar from the flower. So having long beak is an anatomical adaptation, sometimes physiological. What is physiological? It is a function of the body. This is a structure of the body. Physiological function is snake can produce poison. So snake can produce poison. Production of poison is a function of the body. Because poison should be produced inside the body. And some are behavioral. So if certain animals like uh, rats, they come in the night. So these nighttime animals are called nocturnal animal. Nocturnal animals are night active animals. So this is their behavioral things. They can see properly in the night and they can escape from the predators and they can proper hunting the food in the night. So animals adapt to their surrounding for existence and better survival. So we take a few examples given in the resource book. And one example is given plant living in a desert area like cactus. They have a structure called sunken stomata. Sunken stomata. Now what is sunken stomata? These uh, plants, many are cactus plants, they have a leaves and the leaves are quite, you know, uh, bent to inside. And then this layer here, let's say this is the lower epidermis of the leaf. And here is the other part of this lower epidermis. And here, let's say these are the two guard cell. And this space is tomato. And we can also find some hair like this in this area. This is called sun, sunken tomato. That means sunken mean it's uh, embedded into the deeper of the leaf. So what is the advantage? Advantage is they can make a micro environment here. So when they open the stomata, water vapor is leaving this place. After that, because of this protection of this place, a lot of uh, hairs and also uh, deep in the leaf, this make a micro environment. In this micro environment, there is a less chance of evaporation of water. So water evaporation is reduced having this kind of a structure called sunken stomata. It is given in the resource book uh, example. So we should learn uh, as this is the proper example of adaptation of the organism. For example, if you ask to write in exam, exam, uh, write uh, three main adaptation shown by the living organism. You can write many adaptations. There are thousands of adaptations we can find. But here it's given sunken stomata in these kind of plants. These plants are called seropites. So what are seropites? Seropites are the plants live in area lack of water. Seropites live areas where water is the limiting factor. Water is less. 